So it was originally five design lessons from gov.uk, and then I realized that I had massively um, uh, massively overestimated what I could get in five minutes. So we now only have three design lessons from gov.uk, um, but hopefully they will still be as coherent and lovely as they were before. Um, so my name is Lily Dart, and I work at DXW. I'm a graphic designer and web developer. Um, and recently we've been working with the GDS, which is the Government Digital Service, to build their first stage blogging platform for gov.uk. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with gov.uk, it is the single domain to house all government information services, or it will be in the longer run. Uh, it recently won the Design Museum's Design of the Year Award, which is really very prestigious. And they are taking an agile and iterative approach to designing services. So this, amongst other things, means that they base an awful lot of their decisions on user testing, which is very exciting. Um, they've been creating some, creating some great work that uh, really reprioritizes some of the things that were once seen as important for a website. Uh, so today I'd like to have a look into the detail of what they've been producing and hopefully pick out some of the practical lessons as things that we can take forward into our own projects where we have them. So the first lesson is to start with what's useful. Uh, too many sites have very cluttered pages, they have ads, animation, and very distracting calls to action. Uh, Gov.uk has done some very basic things which actually really challenge the design norm while really improving the user experience. The first thing they've done, and a lot of these things are very minor but make a huge difference, is to really increase the font size of, um, of all of the type that they have on the website. And you can see on this example that uh, we've got the BBC website, and obviously their very leading website next to gov.uk, and the, the type size in general approach is really different. Um, it is the sort of change which is often only thought about in the context of minority users, for example, uh, disabled user groups, um, but it will reliably, um, you know, with larger, better spake text, make pages easier to read for, for absolutely everyone. Another method that you can use to uh, make pages and text a little bit easier to use, which is massively underrated, uh, is actually to use white space. Uh, you can see that gov.uk is not in any way afraid of leaving some nice big seemingly blank patches in their pages. Um, it, white space can really help users to focus on, first of all, what they should be looking at, and secondly, to be able to, to read that text without distraction. Um, and it's a common uh, thing that I get asked when designing websites. People will often say to me, what can we do to fill that hole in the page? Um, but actually, uh, we, really, uh, we really do ourselves a disservice by doing that. Uh, the final element for this lesson is uh, the typeface, which is a really nice, uh, subtle thing that the gov.uk guys have done. Um, this font is actually based on transport, which was originally designed for UK road signs, particularly for clarity in, uh, in difficult weather. So it's a particularly easy font to read. Uh, it was designed to do exactly that. Um, but the nice touch is that it has historical relevance for, uh, for British people. It's got cultural reference, um, and it uh, is used all over the world now, but was originally developed by British people in the UK. So the second lesson is that design can help or hinder. Um, as a designer, I'm very aware of the fact that design can make tasks such as navigating a website Great, it can really ease the road for people, but unfortunately it can also do entirely the opposite if it is misused. And this is a lesson that was learnt by the GDS uh, seemingly early on. Uh, you can see this is uh, two boxes, one from the initial release that they did of, uh, of their website and one from a later iteration. Um, and you can see that the first iteration on the left uses very complex imagery and even layers text over the image. Whether it's the next iteration is paired right down, we've stripped away any of the unnecessary imagery and we've even got a nice really big shiny arrow to point people in the right direction. And you can see what is more immediate and what more immediately signposts the user in the right direction. Uh, another element that really commonly gets misused on websites, particularly as time goes on, uh, are icons. Um, and although they're intended to create clarity, um, very often they do entirely the opposite. And you can see on this, this was the alpha release of gov.uk. Uh, we've got 
10 different icons here, all in different and confusing colors, and uh, no key anywhere to be found to actually describe what any of them do. Um, and I don't know about you, but I don't really know why these are red, why these are linked together, or what any of that means. Um, now, interestingly, uh, in the current version of the footer, you can see that we've dropped all of this entirely. And I've hit my time limit, unfortunately. <laughs> all right. Let's, okay, we'll just, just like say, okay, basically the point is, right, release first, get your users to say awesome things, and then do better. <laughs> the end.